Today, I will tell the story of how Russia rebuilt the Superjet SJ-100. It's a story that would make anyone involved in the project feel proud, as it is about human technological achievement and persistence. It also shows capability in the face of doubts from particularly Western observers and from even the people involved in the project. This plane will ultimately be judged when it enters into service, but for all those involved, they are allowed to be proud of what they have achieved so far. Rebuilding any plane is not an easy task. Only a handful of countries can claim to have that capability. Even so, such countries rely in part on the expertise of other countries. But when you have to do it all yourself, it's quite a challenge. There is a saying, necessity is the mother of invention. The SJ-100 has indeed been rebuilt. Every single component has been replaced. So how did they do this rebuild and what prompted it? To understand this, we have to look into the background. The Sukhoi Superjet entered into service in April 2011 with a combination of Russian and international partners providing key components. The engine was based on a French-Russian partnership and avionics from the French, USA and German companies. The jet also faced problems during its development and when it eventually entered into service, it had problems providing spare parts due to its reliance on others and its logistics were found wanting. All planes need constant maintenance and repairs and an unreliable network makes bad economics for airlines. This prevented the widespread adoption of this plane. Even airlines outside Russia who adopted it quickly dropped it. Because of this, the manufacturer started working on rebuilding the plane with Russian made parts. However, this project gained impetus after the start of the Russian-Ukraine conflict and the sanctions imposed. Without access to new Western planes, spare parts, bulletin updates, it was crucial for this project to be expedited. For the Russian government, money was no problem. If you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing. Um, a lot more of you watch the videos than do subscribe. I have a target of a thousand subscribers, so do you know, help me reach that target. In addition, I have a Telegram a channel where I post short clips. The link is in the description, so do come over and join. The purpose of the project was not to create a new plane, but to rebuild with all Russian parts. This resulted in some 60 Russian companies working on various aspects of the project and the primary suppliers had a third party chain of subcontractors. Every single component on the plane was replaced. Russian ones were also replaced with upgraded parts. So what did they do? They reconfigured the primary and navigation flight displays to make them wider and provide more information. The wing tip was reconfigured to make the plane more fuel efficient. Oxygen systems were replaced as were all the av avionics and crucially the engine with the PD-8. In essence, every single component in the original Superjet has been replaced. Moreover, the new basic version has included what would have been options in the original Superjet. The cabin layout has been improved, even the landing gear has been replaced with, new, with the new ones being larger. Russia is a large country and outside of the western areas, the population is quite spread out. A regional jet with a 70 to 100 seat configuration is better suited to accessing the not so densely populated areas. With the PDH engine now a main focus of the test, depending on how this goes and assuming no setbacks, it is possible that this plane could enter into service in 2026. Russian airlines are eagerly waiting for this plane as they have reconfigured their operations within the country and in an easterly and southerly direction to the rest of the world. Whatever political leanings you have, the Russian rebuild of the SJ-100 has to be admired. Perhaps it is not surprising that they can achieve this due to the fact that Russia was at the heart of the Soviet Union where its planes were entirely Soviet built. Furthermore, the military uses entirely Russian-made planes and some legacy Ukrainian ones. So the basic knowledge of aviation exists. 
I dare say very few countries would be able to make the rapid progress that has been made since 2022. Ultimately, we will be able to judge this plane when it enters service and a keen eye will be kept on its safety record. Do leave your comments below. I read every single one of them.